I am Ger Considine. I grew up in a small farm in West Clare and have my roots in Cutaway Bog Country. I have always felt a certain connection to Patrick Heaven and his life and work. Deirdre Manifold was born in Galway and has led a very interesting life. She dated Kavanagh for five years in the early 50s. I made this short documentary to find out more about Deirdre and her relationship with Kavanagh. This is Rock Barton North. We're only just about 50 yards from the sea here. And the Salt Hill Hotel is down there. We can see the sea from here. What we see is a cross into the burn. I remember looking out at the trees there. God, I said, this place is kind of nice. Funny enough, when we moved, I got the hospital bug. Oh, they were sure I was gone. But the Lord has a purpose for me. My family were kind of well off uh, because my father was in America for about 25 years and he made a lot of money in it. And my mother was in, in, in America too. He was in Cincinnati and she was in Boston. We started off being... Quite, quite comfortable now, that you could call it that. And then my father got a very good hold in a land, the best land outside Chum. You could see into the, the burden from where we lived because it was up in a height. Land is the most precious thing in the, in the world. Everything comes out of the land. I worked here and I worked in Dublin. Um, I, I started off in Dublin in the... Uh, in the railway. I was a clerk on the railway. But now I had certain work to do. Uh, they, they gave it to me on a Monday morning. And I was finished that at 12 o'clock on Tuesday. And from Tuesday to Saturday I had nothing to do. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> nothing whatever. Only look out the window. I um, prepared for the old civil service, which gave a few bob more. Oh, but our wages were disgraceful. They were shocking. We had only 25 shillings a week or something. Cabinet used to say, taking in one another's washing. <laughs> That's what he used to say about the civil service. The poet Mickey Gorman was in college at the same time as us. You know, he's Tommy Gorman's brother. And he had studied Patrick Kavanagh. So I remember him cornering me, but more my sister, saying, you know, your mum went down with Patrick Kavanagh. My mother has spoken a lot about Patrick Kavanagh. And now we, myself and her, we have gone back to, we've gone with my mum to the Patrick Kavanagh Festival in, um, in Asheen. It happens in, Asheen. A, in November. Mum has usually given a talk about her life with Patrick Kavanagh. So I've heard a lot in more recent years. It's just very interesting to uh, kind of walk back in time mm. and also to hear mum's comments about because they were down on the lift, where is it, on the canal, yeah. you know where yeah. there is that statue of Patrick Kavanagh and mum was saying, that doesn't look a bit like him. No, no, he didn't look like that at all. <laughs> he didn't have that look. <laughs> well, I have that book of poetry in there now, yeah. and I have laps for us. God in woman. Now I must search till I have found my God. Not in an orphanage. He hides in no humanitarian disguise. A derelict upon a barren bog. But in some fantastically ordinary incog. Behind a well-bred convent girl's eyes, are wrapped in middle-class facilities among the women in a coffee shop. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful God, breathing your love in a cutaway bog. Deirdre moved to Dublin in the early 40s, but found it difficult to fit in. In 1949, she was introduced to Kavanagh and went out with him for five years. Even though she was about half his age, they hit it off like soulmates. Both had known hardship and found themselves in a hostile city. I mean, I, I never expected to meet him because I thought he was up there in the clouds. We were fighting half the time. <laughs> uh, well, we, we, we always went into cafes. Then we'd, we'd go up to the park on a Sunday, fine Sunday, walk around the park or something. I else. went into all the pubs with him. Well, I don't know how many there were, but I, whatever pub he went into, I went into with him. And when I knew him, 
he, yeah. he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't an alcoholic. Yeah. I knew. Was he not? No. No. Yeah. It was later. If it hadn't been for the bloody cigarettes, he'd be alive, he'd live to be a hundred. He had a wonderful constitution. Lovely. Cigarettes and then whiskey at the end of his days. Yeah. There's an awful lot of tragedy about his life. He wasted his life in Dublin, trying to make a few shillings to keep the, to keep from being hungry. There, there was no help for artists or anything like that in those days. She was completely at home in his company, even though their relationship swung between turbulent and placid. This is how we fell out now. He wrote a big long poem about Loch Derg, and I said, will you come to Loch Derg with me? He said, I will. And he never turned up for Loch Derg. I suppose the Lord had it all planned out that way. When I came back then, I said, I'm not seeing you anymore now. I said, this is the last time I'll see you. I said, I'm getting married. That was November. In January, I was in Dublin. And it was a cold, bitter day. And I was walking up Grafton Street. And we did the usual thing, we went in to, to a, a cafe and we had a cup of coffee or whatever it was. On Grafton Street in November we tripped lightly along the ledge of the deep The most famous of Cavanagh's women was Hilda Moriarty, a UCD medical student and the inspiration for his poem on Raglan Road. That would never have worked out, because they had nothing in common. I mean, I had everything in common with them. He used to say we were two sides of the same coin. Now, I, I, I don't think I ever met anybody that I was so close to mentally. No, I didn't. Deirdre was upset about leaving Kavanagh, mostly because he took their parting quite badly. Now there's enough passage of time not to feel a sense of disloyalty to my dad, yeah. You know, yeah. which maybe would have been there earlier on. She met her future husband, Willie Manifold, on a trip to Dingle in 1954 and got married in 1955. I went down on a holiday down to to Kerry and the following morning my husband I saw him coming in from a walk yeah. and I can remember him as well as could be and he knew no Irish but the girl who was with me she was a teacher and she was a native speaker yeah. and she said Jaylene or something like that so when I came back from mass wasn't he put sitting beside me and I, I remember I got a big plate full of rashes and sausages I'd never eat all that so, and he said, little did I think we'd be sharing it for the rest of our lives. He was a cultured man who was understandably jealous of Deirdre's involvement with Kavanagh. He was reading a, a book of uh, Yeats's poems. He had it with him. And, uh, oh, said I, uh, I showed a bit of interest in it. They settled in Limerick and had four children before moving to Galway in 1960 where they ran a car hire business there for a number of years. But Willie suffered from ill health, and Deirdre devoted much of her time to looking after him. I have two daughters have children. And a son of mine died in 1990. Literature has always been important to Deirdre, as are social issues and how people live. I've always been busy. I had been in the Legion of Mary from Dublin for... A long time. And F Frank Duff used to say, the founder, he used to say, always take up a challenge. Walk on the water. Even if you think you can't do it, it doesn't matter. Do the best you can. My hobby has been writing. She wrote her first book in 1982, after her husband, Willie, died. Her Catholic writings mainly focused on economics and politics. I never stopped writing then after that. Fatima and the Great Conspiracy a book on world government and a, 
and the life of Karl Marx. I was, became the publisher myself. There was considerable opposition to her book, Fatima and the Great Conspiracy, mainly from right-wing Catholics. Religion has always been an intrinsic part of Deirdre's life. She celebrates the Latin Mass in her home most Sunday afternoons. People have forgotten. We, you, you have to go back to the Mass Rock and see what our forefathers endured to, to, to get the Mass, you know, to, to, to be at Mass. Uh, the, um, the Second Vatican Council was there to wreck the Church. They say it's the best council the Protestants ever had. That is a matter of belief. It's not a matter of emotion. I I I have to drill myself to believe. I mean, some people can be emotional, but I'm not. And my, even at the consecration, my mind can wander. God put every one of us on this earth to save your soul. Yeah. And uh, our job then is to get to know God. Now, it can be a very hard thing to do. Deirdre remains a very alert woman. She speaks with the steely determination of a proud spirit who is unpretentious and strong-willed. <laughs> you're, as, you're as old as, as, as you look, or as old as you feel. Yeah. <laughs> 